375-2872. Christy, welcome to the program. Hi, Dr. Laura. It's an honor and pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you. What can I help you um, with? Well, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer last July of 2023. Um, mm. So I had a full hysterectomy and then um, six uh, chemotherapy treatments, which just ended in February um, last month. And, Boy, you've um, really, you've really, you really had a challenge there. Wow. Yeah. I was very lucky I caught the cancer early at stage oh, one, which is unusual for ovarian cancer. Um, so I was very lucky. Um, and I was feeling good about completing my, my uh, chemotherapy treatment, and I did very well through the process. Um, so I had my first um, surveillance CT scan um, a week ago you know, basically to check to see how things are going. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the follow-up care that you do. Like every six months, I'm supposed to have the CT right. scan. And they found um, an area of concern during this CT scan. So now I need to have a PET scan, which will tell us if this, area of concern which is in my lymph nodes in my abdomen area in the iliac area yes and it just has me um so frightened and um i don't want to over be overly dramatic about using the term ptsd but when you're waiting to find out if you have cancer or not it just it's very scary and um I know ovarian cancer is a very aggressive cancer, so now I'm just, I was feeling so good about, you know, get catching the cancer early, finishing chemo, and now I have to worry again about having cancer. And if it has spread to my lymph glands, it's not a very good outcome for living a long life. And so... I'm worried to death that I'm going to die early. And, you know, my doctor says, oh, it could just be a, a benign pocket of fluid left over from your surgery, your hysterectomy surgery. Mm -hmm. So, but of course I'm worrying about what if I am going to die early. May, may I ask, uh, may I ask you a question? May I ask yes. you a question? Uh, <clears throat> When they did the hysterectomy, they took out some lymph nodes and checked them out, right? Yes. Okay. Well, they that's removed my appendix also because the 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 uh, cancerous tumor was attached to the right ovary, which is right next to your appendix. So they took that out. They took the lymph glands in the pelvic area out, and they also removed my omentum which is a, a, mm -hmm. a stomach lining underneath your peritoneal um, cavity that kind of holds your intestines. So this new area is in your, my abdomen area, um, not, you know, not in the lymph glands that were removed. So it just has me scared. So my question for you is how do I best handle my fears of having this ovarian cancer return or maybe it really never even went fully away because it's happening so soon right after chemo um, and then fearing I might die early if it ha if it is spreading to my lymphatic system how should I you certainly done my fears ma'am do you think the fears are irrational no no I don't either that's something worth fearing. Okay. So let's talk about let's talk about the options. Let's just say it came back. What did they tell you they would do then? She didn't discuss specifics, but she said let's wait to get the results of the PET scan and then we'll come up with a plan, but I imagine it would be surgery to remove it and mm -hmm. then more chemo. 
Okay. So there, there's a game plan. Yes. It isn't just we see the PET scan and then we die. It's we right. see the PET scan. If it's not thumbs up, then we know what we're going to do. And dying is not the first thing on the list. You're right. I mean, you're already ridiculously fortunate. Stage one, I never even heard of that before. Usually it's really grim immediately. Right. And they took right. out just about everything you could take out, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and leaving you with mm-hmm. some innards. And you sound strong. So I... I think there are enough positive things that you could temper the fear, not eliminate it. If you're calling to see if there's a way to eliminate it, yeah, we can't because it's a rational fear. But rational fears, we tolerate them better when we have game plans. Mm -hmm. So we've got a game plan and dead is not the top of the list. Okay. Because in your fear, you made dead the next step. Yes, I know. And I'm not so sure that is accurate. (laughs) How's Mm -hmm. that for putting it weirdly? (laughs) Not so sure that's accurate. You know, we still have game plans left. Right, right. I, in your position, anybody would be scared. I'm glad you're saying that. Doesn't doesn't mean you're weak or stupid or anything. It's normal. When I had my breast cancer, I was, I don't even know how I could sit in a chair. Mm -hmm. I was just walking in circles in fear. Mm -hmm. And I would say the thing that helped me is something you might, if you haven't, um, my best female friend, just, and my best male friend, not boyfriend, male friend, uh, Mm -hmm. just went through every, every day with me. Every day we talked. Every day. Every mm-hmm. day. And that helped me. Yeah. Because you also, just like you calling me, you don't feel alone. The thing about thinking about dead is that it's alone. Well, the less alone mm-hmm. you have, the less you're going to be thinking about dead. Mm-hmm. I see what you're saying. And frankly, I there's nothing I can boast about. If I didn't have those two good friends, I don't know how I got would have gotten through. I really don't. I know. Yeah. So I know exactly how you feel, even though mine was not as nearly as extensive as your situation. Huh. The fear is the same, though. It's cancer. Yeah. I don't care the where fear. it is. It's the same fear. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I've got a really good support system, great friends, and I... I've been exercising and walking my two dogs every single day throughout everything, um, through the chemo and everything. So, mm-hmm. and the exercise really helps, but I still find myself sometimes feeling very numb and in shock. Like, yes, I can't believe this is coming back. That's it, normal. It, it is that is so back. normal. Okay. And the first time you got diagnosed, you went into fear, and that left. Mm-hmm. You got <laughs> you got diced up, <laughs> okay, and yeah. chemicaled, and then you were optimistic and felt better. Mm-hmm. So you see, this state of mind is not permanent. Oh, um, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. And it makes me feel better, too, that you're saying it's normal to have this fear that oh, it's course. valid. Um, oh, totally. If you didn't have it, yeah. I'd say you really were emotionally constipated. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that kind of takes some of the pressure off of just knowing, okay, it's normal to have these feelings of fear and oh, yeah. the unknown. Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And, you know, for um, a long time afterwards, 
I kept wondering about it coming back, and I talked to the wife of a dear friend of mine who 25 years ago had breast cancer. She, uh, they said a mastectomy. She, she's, she's a tougher woman than I am. Uh, she said, no, uh, just take it out. Leave, leave the breast. Mm-hmm. And I asked her, wasn't she scared to do that? I mean, I asked all the questions. And she said, mm-hmm. I was just determined that it was not coming back. I wanted to keep my breast. I said, take out the lump and leave me alone. And she's still cancer-free. Oh, good for her. You never know. You never know, do you? Yeah. So don't count on being yeah. dead. I'm expecting to get another call from you in three years about some other subject. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Laura. I really appreciate your advice and all the help you give, you've given to me and to others. I love listening to your show. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate it. And uh, would you be willing to call me or text me, uh, email me after the PET, uh, PET scan? Sure. I would be happy to. Either happy which to. way. I'd like to be I there for I... you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Hopefully we'll be able to celebrate that I don't have to worry. Absolutely. And I'll even sing celebration. I'll even sing to you (laughs) on the air. Okay? That sounds like a good plan. All right, Dr. Laura, thank you so much for your help today. Lots of hugs, kiddo. Lots of hugs. My number, 1-800-375-2872. It's true that everybody experiences things through their own lenses of their lives. But it's also true that some things are universal. And the big C word does the same thing to everybody. Oh, shit. I'm going to be dead. And it really requires you to talk to people who have sort of been there and and can help you with how, by their stories of where they are today. And, of course, everybody's story is going to be different. Some people win, some people lose. That's true, too. Nonetheless, whatever it is, good, bad, or indifferent, we do better with everything in our lives when we let our friends care about us. That, there's no medicine that, seriously, emotionally, there's no medicine that beats that. You can give somebody a ton of medicine and they could do poorly. You could give somebody not so much medicine or no medicine, but they have so much moral support that psychologically and uh, Hormonal changes in the brain and the body. It's when you have that emotional support and love. Don't think you're just going to do this alone and show everybody how strong you are. That's BS. Don't do it. Don't you hear me? Don't do that. Don't piss me off. My number, 1-800-375-2872. Be right back. 